Praise the Lord. I wish you and your family <coughs> a happy Easter. We're going to read Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, <coughs> bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. <coughs> and it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, what seek, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, <coughs> saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not, then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, and wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. So in the first part of this, verses 1 to 7, it says, now, the first, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. The day of the resurrection was actually a glorious morning <laughs> for the heaven, for heaven, for the angels, and also for his disciples. <clears throat> Yet, the disciples were not believers at first. They were kind of in unbelief. And it's... Of course, one can note that all the disciples were in gloom, even the women were, because of Christ's death. The date of Jesus' death, and even afterwards, before he had risen from the dead, all of the disciples and believers must have been truly shocked, utterly shocked, in tears and heartbroken. Jesus had already stated what kind of people he would be delivered into. He pronounced them as sinful men. Taking into consideration about his judgment, they were sinful men. That is, then, that the Lord Jesus Christ already knew what kind of men these people that he would be delivered into what kind of men they were. They were already named and pronounced as sinful men. <clears throat> he knew them before he had been even placed into their hands what kind of men they were. So he knew what kind of people the ones who were going to make the judgment call on him were like before he even had met them face to face. However, sometimes he did go ahead and teach, and many of them possibly were listening to the side, and he pointed them out as hypocrites and things like this. They Thus, one could say that they were, yes, religious leaders, but they were in the 
in the words of Jesus Christ, they were sinful. Therefore, we can call them sinful religious leaders. Yet Jesus did not call them leaders. He called them sinful, really. So we find the verses in the word of God that show to whom Jesus was delivered to. In Matthew chapter 26, verse number 47, it says, And while he spake, while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. In Luke chapter 22, verse number 52, it says, Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. So here, noting the people that were amongst the crowd, ready to take Jesus away, the ones that Jesus himself said were sinful men. So we can name some of these. The one who delivered Jesus to the sinful man, obviously, was Judas Iscariot, whom the Bible and the writers of the gospel call called him the one who betrayed Jesus, a betrayer. Judas, with the great multitude, in verse number 47 of Matthew 26, is a great multitude. Or we can say that that is a multitude of sinners, as Jesus said, they were sinful men. They had swords and staves, and they were, and then Jesus was delivered into this sinful great multitude. <clears throat> and so Judas led these people directly to Jesus. And of course, he had the sign of a kiss. And so he betrayed him with a kiss. And so Judas was leading this great multitude of sinners to Jesus Christ. Not in the way that you know, bring him to Jesus so that they can believe on him, but bring him to Jesus too. In the mindset of betraying him. So here, uh, the named of the people that were named that were amongst the people that were sinful. One could say the chief priests, the elders, and the great multitude were those that na were named by Jesus as sinners. And of course, Judas Iscariot himself doing an act that was sinful himself and being on the side of that which was in the great multitude instead of the, the part of the disciples. So he had changed sides. The chief priests, captains of the temple, and the elders were also named in Luke chapter 22 says the captains of the temple and the elders were come to him. So in Luke chapter 22, it mentions specifically that the captains of the temple were in that multitude, great multitude, and the chief priests were there. So Jesus had spoken to the chief priests right, right there in where he was um, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so then, of course, the great multitude, as Matthew calls them. Amen. So they were part of the sinful people that the Lord was delivered into. And uh, so that particular night was the night that Jesus was betrayed in the hands of sinful men. And they were first trying to find accusations against him and then later would bring him unto Pilate for the purpose of crucifying him. In John chapter 18, 12 to 14, it states, Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Obviously, he probably said this because he wanted Jesus to die, and he wanted to give them a person so that that person would die 
for the people. And obviously this was <clears throat> like a prophecy in itself that, yes, Jesus would die for the people, but not just for the Jews, not just for their people, but he would die for every man, every woman, every child. He would die for all people, all sinful people, because we're all sinners. Amen. So, of course, one should note that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when Jesus had mentioned that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men, he meant it in a way that they were not actually following the righteousness of the law. They were actually going against it. So when we say the sin, he was handed over to the sinful men, <clears throat> men we're talking about the fact that he was not delivered into the hands of people that would do righteous deeds, but sinful deeds. And they were not pure in the eyes of God, not following righteousness. Only outwardly were they following righteousness. Also, though, those that were named were not only sinful religious men, but they were also soldiers, captains of the temple, and officers of the Jews as well. So Annas and Caiaphas, the high priest, are those also named by Jesus as the ones that he was delivered into, in other words, the sinful men. <clears throat> Caiaphas had stated that it was expedient that one should die for the people. His intention, obviously, was to get Jesus killed, and that was the reason for this expression that he had mentioned. Yet, it was according to the plan of God, no doubt, that Jesus would die for the people. But not just for the Jews, of course. He would die for every man, Jews, Gentiles, Samaritans as well. He would die for all people because actually everyone is sinful. And all that we have done, our sins, have actually been the cause of the reason why Jesus had to die on the cross. So we are all guilty in that aspect of having him die for us because we needed that. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 57 it says and they that were that laid that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the elders were assembled. In, ver, in Luke chapter 22:54 it says then took they him and led him him and brought him into the high priest's house. First, it seems that Jesus was led away to the house of the high priest, a place that seemingly might have been used for meetings too, for here the scribes and the elders were assembled. And here again, named by Jesus as sinful men were Caiaphas, the high priest, the scribes, and the elders too. In Matthew chapter 26, 59, it states, Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought, fault, fault, sought fault, false witness against Jesus to put him to death. So the reason, the whole reason why they were gathered together was to put Jesus to death. That was their purpose. They sought out people so that they could speak things that were not true, false witness against Jesus, so that they... Their purpose, the whole purpose, was to put him to death. And the chief priests, the elders, and all the council, that is the Sanhedrin, that were named by Jesus as sinful men, and those who created false witnesses or tried to find or sought, sought out false witnesses, and those that would say witnesses that were untrue were also considered to be sinful men. All of this was for the purpose of putting Jesus Christ to death, an innocent one, trying, trying, they trying to put him to death. So the question is, for what cause, what reason would they do this? To them, he was going to be put to death because he was attracting the multitudes to his teaching, leading many to believe on him. They were not receiving, one could say, 
so much fame anymore. They were just uh, not getting the multitudes <laughs> and get, not getting the fame because Jesus was attracting all of the fame. And so Jesus also, when they had come to hear him teach as well, he was calling them hypocrites and in front of the people. So obviously they were very jealous and envious. And so the multitudes who came to listen to him were very respectful, one could say. But the, the elders or the chief priests, the Pharisees, a lot of those Actually, they were the ones that were trying to find fault in his teaching or his doctrine and trying to, to catch him in his words, yet they could not catch him in his words. His, his doctrine was always true. His doctrine was always pure and righteous and better because he was the one who actually gave to Moses the law of Moses. So... The only way that they could deal with him was actually in an illegal way. In Luke chapter 22, 66 to 71, it says, And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people, the chief priests, and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. In Luke chapter 23, 1 to 3, it says, and the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? So just right here in this accusation, this accusation was forbidding that they were saying that Jesus was actually forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, which was not true because he asked for a coin. He saw the, and they saw the image of Caesar on the coin. And then he said, give to Caesar those things that are of Caesar's, those things that are of Caesar's, and to God the things that are of God. So this accusation was not true. And uh, so just noting that this accusation was not true, everything else obviously was false and not true though so the council were gathered together to try to put jesus to death and obviously in any any case and try to put him to death the only reason why they put him or they thought that they could put him to death was because he declared himself to be the son of god the christ the messiah he declared himself and they said he made himself he made himself the son of God. Praise the Lord. So it was actually from the mouth of Jesus Christ that they thought that they could put him to death. They judged him to be guilty. They thought he was an imposter. Who had made himself the son of God. But yet he was true in every sense of the word. So they led him to Pilate. After they found the accusation that they were looking for, and they brought him to Pilate for the purpose of having him to be crucified. Of course, they themselves had stated, according to their law, trying to uh, go by that law, that they were not able to put a person to death. But they wanted to make the Romans do that, the governor. In Luke chapter 23 and verse 4, possibly in doing it this way, they were able to get him crucified. In any other way, if they had killed him any other way, he probably would have been stoned or, you know, other action, but it wouldn't have been as humiliating either. And uh, doing it in the way of getting him to be crucified, that meant, you know, that 
everybody that is walking by going to Jerusalem and a lot of people in Jerusalem could hear about it and and see for themselves you know the the absolute mm, degradation or mockery that they had made of him trying to say that you know this is what we do to people like this but yet he was true and so they didn't want people to follow him in Luke chapter 23 and verse number four it says then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people I find no fault in this man so here is a here is the truth Pilate actually knew what they were up to he had listened to what they said but he knew in the back of his mind he knew exactly what they were up to and he said to the people and to them that were accusing him he found no fault in fact he even knew, noticed later on Herod didn't find any fault either however <laughs> there are two things that that uh, kind of are strange first of all Pilate had him scourged without finding any fault Herod mocked him along with the soldiers. So even though that they had find no, found no fault in him, they still had him scourged or they still had mocked him, which is huh, quite sad. Jesus was led to Pilate, delivering Jesus, therefore, into Pilate's hands too. Another one could say, well, then Jesus was saying that Pilate as well was a sinful man. Yet it seems that Pilate's judgment was even better than the high priests or the council and the elders, for he was not trying to come up with false witnesses, but he was trying to judge um, in the sense that he knew what was right. Even though that Pilate himself, as governor, was not brought up with learning the Old Testament law as his guide, Yet his conscience seemed to be even better, a better guide than the council, the chief priests, the elders, the rulers of the people had. So one could say that Jesus no doubt would have said that the ones like the chief priests, the elders, the rulers, the, the scribes, and all those who tried to put him to death they were more guilty, more sinful. They were acting in, in a more sinful way than Pilate himself, for Pilate didn't have the background that they had. Pilate wasn't taught like they were taught, yet he was following a better, his conscience better than they were. Because they were going totally contrary to the law of Moses and contrary to, one could say, their own conscience, but their conscience must have been totally seared at that point in luke chapter 23 7 to 11 it says and as soon as he knew that he belonged unto herod's jurisdiction he sent him to herod who himself also was at jerusalem at that time and when herod saw jesus he was exceeding glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. So here, what is confusing is the fact that Herod wanted to see Jesus and wanted to see some miracle done by him, but yet at the same time when Jesus ignores him, he just goes ahead and uh, <laughs> mocks him and allows his soldiers, also his men of war, to do the same. So Jesus was also delivered into the hands of Herod, that being what Jesus said, a sinful man. Herod was a sinful man. Thus Herod too was considered by Jesus as a sinful man. In fact, without really a trial, Herod and his men of war mocked Jesus, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, set him in knot, humiliated him, basically, just because maybe he didn't get what he wanted. 
In Luke chapter 23, 13, it says, And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, and the people, so here we have the chief priests, we have uh, Pilate, we have the rulers, and we have then the people. So basically, Jesus was delivered into those people's hands. In Luke 23, 23, 23, 23, and they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Obviously, the chief priests were persuading the people against Jesus. So then they went ahead and gave voices against Jesus. So we have the chief priests. We have um, the rulers and the people and all of these others that Jesus had said were sinful people. Ultimately, Jesus was put back into the hands of Pilate, who called for judgment from the chief priests, who actually said, okay, now you decide. The rulers of the people, who again were the ones one could say Jesus' life was delivered into, and being that fact, they were ultimately called, according to Jesus, sinful men. Thus, all those who participated in the crucifixion, giving their voices against him, were named by Jesus as sinful men. But this account, I believe, is more of a, they, they, they were doing actions against the law. Of course, uh, every man is, has committed sin, of course. But that was obviously a different, different thing what Jesus meant, because he was with his disciples. He was teaching them, but then he said he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men. In Matthew chapter 27, 27 to 31, it says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a corn, a crown, sorry, of thorns they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying hail king of the jews and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head and after that they had mocked him they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him here, not just the chief priests, the rulers or elders are named, but also the soldiers of the governor, that is, pilot soldiers, too, they had participated. In fact, the soldiers of Pilate were the one that, ones that were actually the ones that crucified Jesus. The soldiers of the chief priests, the soldiers of Herod, had also participated in mocking Jesus and etc., but they were not the ones that had actually crucified him. The soldiers of Pilate, the governor, they were the ones who were had, had participated to the degree of crucifying Jesus Christ. So we have three different groups of soldiers. Soldiers of the chief priests, the soldiers of Herod, and the soldiers of Pilate, the governor. They had all participated in one way with mocking or scourging and ultimately the soldiers of Pilate were the ones that actually put Jesus to death by crucifying him. But these would be classified again as sinful men, as Jesus had said. And then in verse number 8, 9, 10, and 11, and uh, we're going back to Luke chapter 24. It says, And they remembered his works and re returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Since being told by angels... The women relayed the news that Jesus had risen from the dead. The eleven disciples were told, along with all the rest, probably meaning all the ones that believed in him that they knew of, they had told. However, though the women had related to them the news of his resurrection, they did not believe 
them. That is unfortunate, <laughs> but it just shows us that Thomas, whom we call the doubting disciple, they, he was not the only one that doubted. Every, every disciple, all the eleven, had doubted that he had risen from the dead when the a, a women, by the angels, had told them that he had risen. So the other, other excuse me, the other disciples did not believe at first either. In verse number 12, it says, Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was to come to pass. He was told by the women that Jesus had resurrected, yet he still, even after viewing the linen clothes lying there, wondered in himself at that which was come to pass. It did not say that he believed, but he contemplated, he wondered how it could be that the body was not found as though it had been stolen or something might have come up. What happened? He did not at the time wondering come to the conclusion of what Jesus had said. So it did not dawn upon him, did not come back to him what Jesus had said at that time. So Peter was one that he had denied him. Before then, he had unbelief at hearing the news from the women. But Jesus, of course, later appears to him and to the others and to Thomas himself, and then they did believe. But we should believe at first and know, obviously, that Jesus has risen. But this is... Uh, the verse here in verse number eight, Luke 24, eight says, and they remembered his words. In other words, talking about the women, the women remembered the words of Jesus after the angels had told him, didn't, didn't he not say these things to you that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men and then he would be, uh, he would rise from the dead. Praise the Lord. So <clears throat> here it says, verse number seven, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. That, uh, verse number six, two, and verse number five also says uh, what the angels have said. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified in the third day, rise again. Verse number eight, and they remembered his words. So the angel spoke these words, and of course they remembered what Jesus had said. So the first ones actually to remember the words of Christ were not the men, not the disciples, but they were the women that believed first. As it states in verse number eight, the first, the entire verse that is one that expresses the fact that the women had remembered his words, the words of Jesus Christ first before any of the men. It was no doubt because the angels had told them and reminded them of his words. The women were told directly by the angels the news of Jesus's resurrection. The women did not have to see Jesus first to believe. They believed after the angels had told them, according to Luke's account. But the men did have to see Jesus first. The men who were his disciples, the men who had seen all the miracles and everything that he had done to these people, like getting the blind their sight, having the you know dead raised also, and the lepers are cleansed, and you know all of these miracles that Jesus had done, and the disciples had seen many more miracles, obviously, than the women did, because the women were not walking around with him everywhere. They had seen some miracles, but then they possibly stayed in their own cities, while the disciples had traveled everywhere with him. So. Who should have believed him more? The disciples. But the women believed him first. Believed what the angels had said. 
Amen. So the great, good news is, or the great news, that Jesus Christ himself had risen from the dead. That is the good news. He is risen. He has risen from the dead. Amen. Lord bless you.